good morning everybody. Uh, my outfit today <laughs> tells the story of my weekend. My two favorite national teams. One, wearing the orange of the Netherlands. Again, gotta do it at work once you're at that. Doesn't happen that often. But I also have my Italy jacket. So, Italy won too. Let's talk about Italy and I'm gonna go back to the Dutch and especially the Germans a little bit later on. Uh, I actually watched yesterday, you can say two and a half games more or less. Uh, I start. You can tell it's Monday, people are completely out of it. Driving. Uh, taking my right of way all the time. Already. No, I uh, started off with Serbia and uh, in, the Ro in the Romania. Uh, did not actually plan to watch it, but it just felt so good, uh, good because we really uh, were taking it easy. I started feeling better right around uh, early afternoon. I think I'm fit enough to go to work, so yeah. It was a nice, somewhat relaxing day yesterday, I gotta say. So yeah, after all the craziness the days before, a little bit of a relief. Yeah, Serbia in Romania. Um, it ended goalless, but this was a super eventful game. Uh, you could see from the beginning, I think I started watching around the 20th minute. Uh, that was uh, yeah, where I needed to start it. Uh, I, I couldn't do it earlier. But you could see from, from, from the beginning that Serbia is the more complete team. Uh, they really play well together. They actually had a lot of possession. Um, had largely control of the game and Romania was more uh, well organized in defense. But that was about the extent of what Romania could do. There were not too many attacks coming from Romania. I think I remember one, maybe two. Uh, but I remember more Serbia really being fluid going forward um, and having chances, especially over Mitrovic, who we still know from the World Cup, of course. Um, getting chances, I think there, were, uh, there, was, there was not Mitrovic. Uh, late in the second half, where it was a cross in and they just went that wide. Uh, you know, flat cross in and a uh, shot just wide. That should have been the one, I think. Um, speaking of should have been, um, right before halftime was um, it was a stupid uh, clearance by the Romanian defender Tamas, right in front of the referee. He put his head high. Uh, his uh, fo uh, foot too high to clear the ball and hit uh, the Serbian attacker right on the ear. Uh, it was a straight red card. Uh, it was more clumsy than uh, malicious, I, 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 I would say. I think a yellow could have done there. Penalty, absolutely. But I was, I felt that the red card is a little bit too much uh, of a punishment there. But yeah, um, Serbia got the penalty and Milink, was it uh, not Milinkovic? I don't know another uh, name. Um, showed it high up in the stands. Uh, that was about as badly a penalty taken as you can imagine. Um, he missed the goal by at least two or three meters. Uh, he shot high, which is usually not a bad idea. But that just that just was an awful penalty. It was even in such a sense a bad because I thought Thorfer is going in high. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was not missed. And so yeah, the Romanian goalkeeper already made uh, quite a few saves. Uh, he didn't make this save though, but you know he got a little bit hot. Uh, the game also got hot because then there was uh, you know high challenge, and suddenly the Romanian defender is lying on the ground. Everyone claiming a red card for a Serbian player, which I found uh, rather unnecessary and not quite fair. And uh, referee had a lot to do to uh, calm the, the game down. 
and then uh, by, by, by the way this was since Serbia played in all red and Romanian all yellow the referee was from the Netherlands and I thought uh -huh, yellow and red he should have whistled the game <laughs> in orange <laughs> to be right right in the middle of it nah light blue made perfect sense so yeah uh, right after halftime was an attack uh, you know a high ball forward and you could see the uh, striker of Romania with the goalkeeper the serving goalkeeper out trying to uh, jostle for space to get it and it was outside of the box and the ball jumped up and jumped at the hand of the Serbian goalkeeper um, he didn't receive anything there was no card given, there was no uh, free kick or whatsoever. Uh, by the rule, touching the ball with your hand, if your goalkeeper out outside of the box is a red card. And the only thing I could say is that he was a little bit nudged into the ball. And that probably was the reason why, um, why the referee didn't give anything, but I I've seen give red cards given. This is now the second time that I see that the goalkeeper touches, handles the ball outside of the box, and there is no um, red given. It was not as blatant as the Eindhoven Milan Inter game. Uh, that's, that I also gotta say. Uh, so yeah, uh, I could I would have un un understood since the red card for Romania I think was already a little bit harsh. Then uh, that one I think. It would have been harsh too, but a little bit more even. But yeah, the game continued the way it went uh, with Romania very well organized, Serbia still having uh, more of the game and being very well in attacking but not converting their chances, which is something the Germans also did quite well. And yeah, so it ended in a nil-nil. Uh, I think this was a point that Romania stole from Serbia. Serbia could have really gotten control on that group uh, with the win there and they would have deserved to win, I gotta say it that way. Uh, fighting spirit by the Romanians, very well organized, so you know, uh, they did they did what they could do but you could see that they had a far more limited squad uh, as compared to Serbia. And now uh, Serbia I think has now 8 points, Romania has 7. I'm not now has six has six points, and then uh, in the evening Montenegro won four one in Lithuania. They have now eight points, so that group is actually quite open. Uh, although it seems like Serbia is the one who will take the group. I think they. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Serbia, I think, is the best team in this group and uh, will. Surely with a win over Lithuania and then at home to Montenegro, I just don't see them uh, relinquishing the, the group, especially how they kind of got an easy win in Montenegro. Yeah, uh, Montenegro, yeah, uh, they were, uh, Montenegro was for now nothing up, but the goal of the day was the last goal by Lithuania, which uh, kind of a bicycle kick motion uh, in the net. Which was, I think, the only highlight for, Li for Lithuania. Montenegro, uh, the run of the play clearly benefited Montenegro a lot. So, uh, there was just this was the only way it could go. Uh, benefited, and then they won. And, yeah. I think yeah, <laughs> this group looks interesting. Uh, when I, if you saw my video on how to improve the Nations League, I think uh, groups of four are a lot more interesting. We'll come to that in a sec. Uh, the next game that I watched was then Russia against Turkey, uh, which just by the look, look of it, if you think about whether those two nations are at the moment, is already a heck of a matchup. But uh, first of all, I gotta give it to the Russians. Um, they the way that they are scheduling their games, you know, the uh, stadiums they pick for this Nations League are uh, absolute genius in a way. Kaliningrad, close to Sweden, lots of Swedish fans coming, bringing their Euros. Now, Turkey, uh, where do we play? Well, the closest that we kind of have is Sochi. Uh, let's play it in Sochi. Let the Turks come, spend a lot of money. There. 
really think this is uh, the idea. You had a full stadium. And with that full stadium, you, so now we're in. With the full stadium, you have also a great atmosphere. And then you also got a pretty good game out of Russia. Um, took them a while to get going, but once the big boy Juba um, got rolling, and it's fascinating name to me. He's uh, almost anachronistic soccer player. Uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago, he would have been an absolute superstar in the Russian system. He works fine. Uh, Russia got, I think, with the first chance, more or less, they took the lead. Uh, was a corner kick uh, headed to the post, and Neustädter standing at the right point, just putting his foot there, good reaction, and a ball went into goal. One nothing for Russia, and from that moment on, Russia took complete control over the game. Turkey tried to come, but he always had the feeling that they are a little bit too slow overall to really. Uh, get attacking and moving forward. Uh, of course, I watch Chala Noglu, uh, who assisted the greatest chance of Turkey right before the 1-0. Uh, there was a 2-on-1 and the Russian defender just intercepted the pass perfectly. Uh, other than that, I think it would have been a short goal for Turkey. But yeah, uh, then Russia took control over the game. Um, I always had the feeling that, as I said, Turkey is a little bit too slow and Russia, if they wanted, they could make it. And in the second half, I didn't see much of the second half, but I saw the uh, most important point. Uh, wonderful count, counter attack. Uh, the Cherishev finished perfectly, uh, aiming in the low near corner. And that was done and dusted. It. it was a very well deserved victory. I think Turkey had nothing to answer. Jersey matchup. I liked it a lot. I didn't like that uh, the inset on top showed the Turkey is playing in white and grey when they clearly had white uh, with red. But I understand this might have been a little bit confusing. But uh, this hole with the tri uh, with the diamond and then the circle in there and divide it. I have to say it's more confusing than helping. I think uh, they should rethink a little bit the branding there. I honestly don't like it. But yeah. Russia is now sitting atop this group with seven points. Turkey cannot uh, get promoted anymore. This was basically the top of the table clash. They only have one game against Sweden, and Sweden has one point. However, Sweden has two uh, games left, and that means that Sweden needs to win twice. Uh, then they have a chance of beating. Uh, then they would uh, get promoted. But as it stands, a draw between Russia and Sweden will see Russia through. If Sweden does not beat Turkey, Russia is through. So Russia looks good to go to uh, League A, I would say. And then the big game in the evening was Poland against Italy, which initially I thought I'm not going to watch. But again, uh, through to sharing, do this a little bit between me and my wife. I actually managed to watch the first, uh, most of the game. Only the first 50 minutes of the second half, I, I couldn't see. And um, first half, immediately Italy went to an attack and, uh, and uh, hit the bar by Jorginho. Uh, Poland looked a little bit shocked. And Italy, unlike a month ago, when Poland was the team that take, took the game to Italy, it was now the other way around. And Italy looked a lot, looked very self-assured. Uh, very good offensively. You could see that things are clicking. The only thing that was not clicking is uh, scoring the goal. Uh, another bar was hit, I think, by Chiesa. A huge chance. Then uh, Florenzi had a, a, a absolute must score. And then there was another one. I think Italy should have easily led by the half. Uh, that they didn't was a little bit. Yeah, it was weird. Mancini complaining that he has no striker when there's Immobile. Yes, he has not done much for the Italian national team, but I honestly think that if you need a striker who hits the goals, you have it right on, on the back, but he didn't even bring him on. So that must be some 
bad blood between those two. Uh, second half from all that I could see, Poland adjusted. And again, I have to say the Polish coach, Jerzy Bremczyk, who played one year for LASK. It is so weird for me to see him now uh, as a goal Polish national team coach. Um, and then there's Mancini, a great player at his time, world class player Bremczyk. Yeah? It's just, it's, it's a weird, but I'm very happy to see it. Uh, there's a coach who played for LASK. Super. Also, I didn't know that Kharkov has such a huge stadium. I mean, I read it up, it, it is was newly rebuilt and refurbished. But it used, that actually used to be the Polish national stadium. It's now second large, and I played both games there. I did like that it has an athletics track in there. I think that's a little bit of a down. But uh, that region, uh, is actually quite some high quality, uh, has quite many people living there. But yeah, second half, Poland adjusted and it seemed a little bit more even. Still, Italy had the better chance and a little bit more of the game. However, there were really dangerous Polish attacks as well. I remember one where um, Lewandowski played a really nice pass through the defense, uh, shot taking, I think it was Milik. Uh, which Donnarumma saved, he, he one time did more or less uh, and had two central on goal. If that goes in the corner, that's a surefire goal for Poland. And the rebound went uh, went over. Um, I gotta say, this game felt to me the whole time that Italy is having a chances and not making them and Poland will score. It almost proved to be true because when Poland attacked, it was dangerous. And you could also see that Italy is a little bit. Uh, Poland adjusted well in the midfield, you know, uh, Italy didn't have the big moves anymore. Uh, but they still controlled the game, and you could still see. And uh, the other thing that was surprising is that there were hardly any um, substitutions. And then the substitution was Lasagna and Biragi. <laughs> who came on uh, and I read the commentators that I watched were kind of slamming um, Mancini uh, and yeah there were more chances for Italy and more not going in uh, it was really a little bit like the goal is shot by Chesney and his defense although yeah he sa Chesney saved well and it seemed like a nil-nil draw. A nil-nil draw would have meant that Portugal wins the group and goes to the final four. Uh, any win in that game, that team cannot be relegated in the end anymore, still in contention for a final four spot. Corner last minute. Lasagna uh, with a header. Biragi scores the goal. 92nd minute. And you could see this was a relief for the entire Italian team. They finally won. They finally won a game after playing well. They deserve to win, although I think it really looked like a nil-nil draw uh, at that point. Again, a rather exciting nil-nil. Uh, I liked how Italy played. Gotta say it. Um, I also thought that when Poland launches an, 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 an attack, it's good, but Poland seemed to be yesterday the more limited team. And it's so funny because just a month ago, the two sides met in Bologna and it was the exact other way around. So yeah, there you go. Uh, Italy has a win and now with some luck, can even make it to the final four. Um, we'll see. They need to beat Portugal next. The game will be played in Milan. At the, almost at the anniversary of when they didn't win in Milan against Sweden. Yeah, so that group is still open, but Poland is the first relegated team. And that's all about what I mean. We have four games played now, and there's already one decision um, that happened. And I'm not sure if I necessarily like that. Uh, of course, I like the result, although. To be honest, I, I have a hard time, you know, this relegation seems like a punishment. Um, but I thought both for Italy and for Poland, it might not be bad to go in League B because you're uh, really a quality team that can actually go somewhere. And maybe League B would give you 
enough experience that you actually head back into A. And you know, it has not, it doesn't really have any uh, implications, if you will, on the qualify except for seeding. And I think that should be alright. I think both teams will qualify for Euro 2020. Well, that covers all the action of yesterday. Let's talk a little bit about Germany, of course, there's a lot of pressure on Jogi Uh When I said I liked how Italy played, I actually, from what I could see, I didn't like how the Dutch played. And by the way, the goal was scored, of course, by Van Dijk, and the third one was scored by Wijnaldum. Two players that I had, I just escaped my mind yesterday. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know why, but here you have to Van Dijk and Van Aldum were the two. And I had I actually the whole morning I was saying, yeah, Van Dijk, Depay, uh, Van Aldum, Van Dijk, Depay, Van Aldum. Uh, once I make the video, complete blank. I really wasn't feeling well yesterday. Yeah, I did not necessarily like how the Dutch played because I think it betrays a little bit their roots. Uh, I would like to see the Dutch really again adopting a typical Dutch style and not this counter attacking slightly seeding back style and it's kind of funny Italy played more like I want the Dutch to play the Dutch played more like I am used that Italy is playing and the other thing is that suddenly Germany decided okay or maybe Jogi Löw decided maybe also play a little bit uh, the counter-attacking style because although they had a lot of possession it always seemed that the team that scores first will go on as winners because both uh, teams are more comfortable with launching a, a fast attack. Now, I alluded to it yesterday, I really think that Germany is in a rut and it is because they dig themselves in. They never really, yesterday they didn't look bad against France, they didn't look bad yesterday, the day before yesterday. Uh, they didn't look bad, it's really that the chances are not going in and it's similar to Italy, uh, I think once they would score a goal, I think Germany can be lethal again. But the truth is that confidence is missing and everyone is beating up on them and of course Jogi Löw I think is under a lot of pressure. Being relegated from the Nations League might just be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Gotta say it uh, that way. Um, it's a tough group. You have France in there, you have the Netherlands in there, um, you have Germany in there. I mean, those are three big name nations. And it kind of makes the question a little bit of a Yes, the Netherlands have not been great over the past four years. Uh, and for that reason, they deserve not being seated higher. But, and I'm not sure still about the talent pool in the Netherlands. Uh, also gotta say that, and you know, they have played now two games, they lost narrowly to France. They could have gotten a result there too, although France was at least for 60 minutes clearly the better team. But uh, they got the equalizer and probably could have hung on to it. But you always had the feeling of France is a way more complete squad. I had the same feeling as uh, two, day, two nights ago. Uh, when the Germans were playing, that the Germans are a little bit more of a complete team. There's a little bit more identity to them in the team. However, the Dutch, you could already see in their launch account counter attacks that they did well. Uh, they also uh, struck the run, the run of the game clearly favored them. I mean, having this one mistake by Neuer and then the, uh, Paul hitting the bar and the rebound going right at Van Dijk uh, really favors them and they could have made a second one uh, but Germany should have equalized uh, so you know it's so hard to say it. it's Jogi Löw's uh, it's one of those things I read it the other day that someone found out that uh, so soccer is 50% chance I disagree with the 50% I think it's more like 20-25% chance but it's exactly what happened in the Germany Netherlands game that the teams were sort of evenly matched with slight advantages for Germany but the ball went in for the Dutch and the uh, leading goal was lucky the only thing that you gotta give to Germany is that conceding two late goals is probably um, 
that's not good because they could have actually I think there was a bar hit as well so it could have been uh, worse in for Germany so it should have been I think uh, two nothing that would have sealed the game but um, the three nothing was a little bit too high and I think it was not entirely fair to the Germans but yeah I <laughs> As much as I dislike the Germans, I really wish that Yogi Löw can turn this a little bit around because with all my dislike for Germany, the soccer world is more interesting if there's a good German team. Can I say it that way? I'm gonna, um, it's very interesting what they will do in Paris tomorrow evening. Well, let me know all your thoughts about the games, Germany, Netherlands and uh, all the games yesterday. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.